What's up my guys back with another one this time it's gonna prop warrior secrets I will be doing the fairy arms one immediately after this one. This is items and gear and classic that you will need for TBC As usual let's start off with my co-authors massive thanks to TSW and Tandor for all the information and overall huge brain warrior knowledge Okay, I would not be able to do this without you guys uh, TSW and Tandor both of them raid lead main tank and top guilds on multiple different private servers man. Thank you guys both First off, why should you care? There are many items that you can obtain during your adventures in Azeroth that can be used for leveling, dungeons, heroics, and some are even pre for raiding when you enter Outlands. If you get any of these pieces, keep hold of them and you can find yourself saving some time, sanity, and even gold. As you guys know, there's more to a tank gear than just keeping a set on you. You can build your tank for whatever situation you're about to attempt. Some can lead towards threat, stacking expertise and hit. On the other hand, some choose to have more survivability, stacking stamina, armor, and avoidance. Which might not be that big of an issue if classic TBC is going to be as easy as classic is, but no one's going to know yet. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put each slot here. I'm going to start with the head, and then I'll go to shoulders, knees, and toes, and everything else afterwards, all right? So I'm going to have the left side be classic with your face six bis. And then I'm going to have the right side be TBC, which will be the T4 previous, okay? So we got the T3 helm out of a Nax with 12 dodge rating at 21 defense rating, 45 stamina. And on the TBC side, you have the engineering tankatronic goggles with the meta, the yellow socket, 38 defense rating, 13 hit, and 21 dodge rating, and then a blacksmithing helm with three sockets and 33 defense rating, and then another blacksmithing helm with three, 1300, pretty much 1400 armor, 47 stam, three sockets, 23 res, 23 defense rating, and last is out of steam vault is a Marmadon, Myrmidon's headdress, red socket, meta socket, and 33 defense rating, okay? So to start, you should be engineering, like, prop warriors should be engineering, there's no reason not to be, okay? The helm is extremely good, plus you'll get a trinket called the Goblin Rocket Launcher that you'll end up using as to pull on occasion as well. It's a good stamp trinket too. We'll get down there when we get to the trinkets. So the goal here is obviously Tankatronic Goggles. In the meantime, just run your T3 until you can afford to go buy Felsteel. This shouldn't be that expensive because blacksmiths use this to level up their blacksmithing, right? So it's not going to be that bad to get. It's it's really inexpensive. Mermbrons is also a good helm and you do get it. Steam Vaults, you'll be doing that right away. Literally, I think right when you hit 70, so it's not that bad. Um, this... Felsteam seems a little better because there's a socket which gives you a little bit more stam and about 300 more armor, okay? If for some reason you are not enter engineering or you desperately need the last bit of your crit immunity, then replace your fell steel with Helmet of the Stalwart because this is actually Biss if you're not engineering. It has a lot of crit reduction, lots of stamina, lots of armor, and the only thing it's missing is avoidance. Next, next. You have out of AQ, Mark Cthune, 15 defense rating. 12 dodge rating, 10 hit rating, and 24 stam. And you have the two next out of TBC for 21 badges of justice, necklace of the juggernaut, 19 agility, 33 stam, 22 defense rating, and then out of set the calls, a quest at the end of set the calls, mark of the raven guard, 40 stam, 17 defense rating. Pretty simple, just use mark of Cthune until you can get mark of the raven guard, which you'll get right when you hit 70. And then, you, actually, I think you can get this quest before you're 70, I think 68. And then once you get this, just save up until you can get necklace of the juggernaut. Pretty simple. Shoulders. T3 shoulders at a Nax, 29 stamp, 16 strength, 10 hit rating, 21 block value of your shield, not that big of a deal, and then 13 defense rating. On the TBC side, you have two. You have out of Arcanite Crypts Heroic, Fan Blade Pauldrons, red and a blue socket, 20 defense rating, 15 parry rating, and out of Shadow Labyrinths, normal shoulder guards of the bold, 25 strength, 25 stam, two sockets, and 17 defense rating. Pretty much just replace T3. You, it's, you're not going to get much action out of T3. You just replace it with Shoulder Guards of the Bold until you can get Fan Blade to drop from you out of the Heroic, okay? Not that bad of a Heroic, but it is a daily Heroic you got to farm. Now, since we're coming from Classic, though, your T3 Shoulder should already be enchanted, you know, with the Nax enchant. So really, you can just wear your T3 until you get to your Fan Blade if you really wanted it. It's only very minute, slightly less defense and dodge rating if you do that. It saves you a little bit of, you know... But the thing is, you're already going to be in Shadow Labs, and so if it drops for you, don't not wear it, you know? And then as for the shoulder enchant, Scourge will be bissed unless you're stacking avoidance, okay? Next up, Cloaks. At an act, you have the Crypt Fiend Silk Cloak, 14 stam, 10 defense rating, 12 dodge rating, and 10 hit rating. And for the TBC side, TBC side, two cloaks out of Steam Vault's normal Devil Shark Cape, 22 stamina, 18 dodge rating, 20 defense rating, 29 block of your value of the shield, and then a crafted BOE called Cloak of Eternity, 76 armor, 36 stamina, and 23 defense rating. Really simple here as well. You're not getting much out of the next one. You're just going to replace this with Devil Shark. No reason to waste gold on this. So on a fresh server, not having a classic piece, you usually would just go cloak until you get this. But this, I mean, these are just, just where... Crypt Fiend until you get Devil Shark, pretty much. Simple enough. Teeth chest. T3 chest. 1100 armor, 21 strength, 43 stam. 
20 dodge rating. I mean, 12 dodge rating, 20 defense rating, 20 hit rating. TBC side, we have the Crafted BOP Black Breastplate of the Kings. 31 strength, 46 stamina, 3 sockets, 31 crit rating, 20 hit rating. Then you have Arc Normal, the Breastplate of the Bold. 1100 armor, 23 strength, 21 agility, 33 stam, 3 sockets, and 19 defense rating. And lastly, I had a quest from the Grand Breastplate of the Warbringer. 45 stamina, 31 defense rating, 30 hit rating. So, TT Trust is actually pretty good. It's actually really good. Sadly, the only reason you replace it is because you get this while you're questing. So it kind of sucks. So you're just going to replace your T3 with this when you get it from a questing, okay? And then use Warbringer until you can get Breastplate of the Bold. If you're defense capped already, then Breastplate of the Kings is really, really good. However, you're usually starving for defense rating this early in the game, and it's severely lax decent defense, so you're going to go with Breastplate. Next up, Bracers. Um, at a Nax, you have the T3 Bracers, 7 defense rating. They're kind of doo-doo. And then uh, at a TPC, cra crafted BOE, Braces of the Green Fortress, 39 stamina, 10 dodge rating, 17 defense rating, and Shatari Rot Arm Guards, 500 armor, 20 strength, 18 stamina, yellow socket, and 12 defense rating. Okay. So for gloves, I mean, I'm sorry, it's Braces, simple, replace, these are garbage. You're going to replace these immediately with Shatari until you can craft Green Fortress. That's it. Gloves, a little spicy here. You got the Nax gloves, T no, the T3 gloves at a Nax. 27 stamina, 13 defense rating, 13 block rating, 21 block value of the shield. And of course those edgies, the edgies get a little bit of value here, 230 armor, obviously a lot of armor loss, 19 hit rating and 17 expertise. Expertise is very, very large for, for pot warriors. It's a worth two per one, it's, it, it, the ratio is two to one on hit. So it's like double. Your expertise is double and then it's pretty much hit, okay? TBC crafted BOE again, a lot of crafted BOEs for pot warriors by the way. Uh, Gauntlets of the Iron Tower, 30 stamina, 2 sockets, 26 resilience, and 20 stamina, I mean 20 defense rating. And you have Fell Steel Gloves, another crafted BOE, 943 armor, 27 stamina, 2 sockets, and 25 defense rating. And in Gauntlets of the Bold, 17 strength, 16 agility, 31 stamina, 2 sockets, and 14 defense rating. Straight up, T3 gloves are trash. And edge, edge, edge Masters, while they're still nice, it lacks all the survivability, okay? So just stop what you're doing right now and go pick up these spells still off the auction house locally they're cheap just pick them up okay now gauntlets of the iron tower are really good however they are very expensive and typically only used if you need the resilience for crit immunity okay gauntlets of the bold though you'll end up getting while you're doing your rep grind and because you have to go steam vaults your chain running steam vaults so you're going to get these anyway at some point but they also fall slightly short of the fell steel so it's going to look like you're replacing these with steam vaults when you get it unless you just buy these from the ah Belts, T3 belt, out of an axe, 20 strength, 26 stamina, 18 block shield, block value of the shield, 13 block rating, and 13 defense rating. TBC side, out of Slay Pins Heroic, you have the Girdle of the Immovable, 17 strength, 33 stam, 2 sockets, 18 defense rating, and 12 shield block rating. And out of Quest, out of Nether Storm, Shatari of Indicators, Waste Guard, of course, 655 armor, 3 to 3, 33 stamina, 20 defense rating, 24 shield block rating. 29 block value of your shield okay for belts as you can see shatari is just a literally just a better version of the t3 so just replace t3 when you get this quest when you're about 67 68 you get it it's so easy you just wear this until you can get girdle to drop from you out of the heroic uh people always are trying to slay pins is probably the most popular heroic that gets ran for the casters there's a quagmire eye trinket that comes out of there so it's really easy to get in there do it every day and it'll end up dropping okay also not only do you get this belt, but also you get a lot of Shatar rep and you have to need Shatar rep in order to get into Architrash as well. So you can use, you want to use this until you farm up your girdle. Legs, T3 legs, 23 strength, 983 armor, 37 stamina, 19 defense rating, 12 dodge rating, and 32 block value to your shield. On the TBC side, Keepers of Time Revere, Time Warden's Leggings, 1000 armor, 57 stamina, 3 sockets, 11 dodge rating, and 18 defense rating and of course the crafted boe fell steel leggings 1200 armor 39 stamina three more sockets and 33 defense rating okay now the t3 pants are pretty bad i'm not gonna lie you'll replace them pretty much right away with of course fell steel which of course will not be that expensive as they are best for mitigation and avoidance thus they are considered bis meanwhile time wardens are really close so if you're broke and you do not need death cap go ahead and swing uh time wardens if you want but like I said, you're going to need Def Cap. Def Cap's kind of hard to get this early on in the game. Boots. T3 boots. 756 armor, 15 strength, 34 stamina, 13 defense rating, and 12 dodge rating. 
And the two from TBC had a Mana Tubes Heroic, boots of the Colossal, 800 armor, 22 strength, 27 stamina, 2 sockets, and 19 defense rating. And a quest from Mana Tombs, ironically, Flesh Beast Metal Greaves, 25 stamina, 18 defense rating, and 28 dodge rating. Really easy here. Replace T3 with Flesh Beats until you can farm up these boots, okay? They're not cutting it. These are just literally a better upgrade than T3, so you're not going to roll T3 here. Just get it. You'll get these from a quest before you're 60, and then you start doing heroics. I mean, before you're 70, sorry, and then you'll start doing heroics and get that. Next up, Spicy Rings. You have the Nax T3 ring, 27 stamina, 12 dodge rating, 15 defense rating, and out of AQ, Ring of Emperor Veklar, 100 armor, 18 stam, 12 agility, and increase your defense rating by 13. So, Lower City Exalted Rep, Shapeshifter Signet, 25 agility, 18 stamina, 20 expertise rating. Like I said, expertise is double, so it's really 40. 40 hit. Out of Arc Normal, Elemental Band of the Century, 24 stamina, 20 defense rating, 19 dodge rating. And then Manitoub's Heroic again, Crystal Band of Valor, 27 stamina, 22 defense rating, 16 hit rating. And a quest another storm, a nice little green ring, which is way better than what you think it would be. 34 stamina, 6 agility, 12 defense rating, and 6 hit rating. Okay. Not too confusing here. These rings aren't really going to cut it that bad. You know, Shapeshifters is really, really good. The 20 expertise is equivalent, like I said, about 40 hit. You run this and then run Crystal for a threat set. And if you want to be a little more survivability, then run Elementium. And crystal, I would say probably yeah. Elementary and crystal. Drop Vec for you're dropping Vec right away for Wind Traders man. You get this way requesting this actually insane ring. So you're gonna wear this until you get your set. Like I said, I don't think the speculation in the community is that survivability like like building for survivability is not gonna be as important because we don't know one we don't even know how hard the server is gonna be right. But if the server is gonna be as easy as classic, which is what we're all speculating, you're gonna be going threat. In which case you just go shape shift through some crystal. Good old trinkets, the best part, man. Out of BWO, you got two of them. Styling's impending scarab. You probably have it still and using it. 24 block rating, 24 block value of your shield, and 20 defense rating. And then Drake Fang Tal Talisman DFT, 56 attack power, 20 hit rating, and 12 dodge rating. And then out of Nax Kiss of the Spider, crit by 14, hit by 10, haste reading proc 200 for 15 seconds. On TBC side, you have the two both Dark Moons cars. Situational. It, it's hard to tell if they're going to be available it's it's crazy I, I i mentioned them just in case so people don't bitch about them in the comments but 51 stamina both of them each of them one of them give a 10 percent chance when hit by an attacker or harmful spell to deal about 100 holy damage to your attacker that's not the big of a deal but they're stam trinkets and that's kind of what it is you know what i mean it's a, it, it, this early in the game you need stamina you're jimming stamina for everything like you need stam right unless the server's just going to be really easy and you're not going to need stam but I need, like i said who knows continuing Engineering Goblet Rocket Launcher, like I talked about earlier, 45 stam, fires a powerful rocket enemy that does 960 to 1400 damage and stuns them for 3 seconds. It also stuns you for 2 seconds. This is used almost 9 times out of 10 on a fresh server. This gets used as a pulling tool. It's a, an excellent pulling tool for warriors because you, I mean, you have a pulling tool you could, but it's just a really good one. Especially for prop values because what's your pulling tool is a prop value. You don't have any range pulling besides uh, your Avenging Wrath. At Shadow Labs, you have Adamantine Figure Trinket with no stats on it except for defense rating and an increased armor proc. And then Dabiri's Enigma from a quest. It is 30 defense rating, 125 block rating for 15 seconds. Okay. Now, Warriors have a ton of options for trinkets. I'm not going to be able to show them all. Just know that this they're all situational. Okay. Chances are you're going to need at least one defense trinket since defense is rougher to get early game, like I said. The other trinket's going to depend whether or not you want a threat, survive, a threat or survivability. Stylines and an Adamantine figurine are the best for defense, while Kiss of the Spider and DFT are best for threat. Deberius is a solid defense trinket if still under defense cap, and Goblet Rocket Launcher is a solid stam trinket, like I said, and also an excellent pulling tool. So, like I said, it's all situational, okay? Next step, the weapon main hand. Okay. There it is. Thunder Fury. Now, before I get into this, let me give you a little note about Thunder Fury. Improved Thunderclap was buffed for Warriors in TBC, okay? And it now overrides the Thunder Fury attack speed slow debuff and also the threat generated from the damage proc. So it's not amazing for single tar target, but it can still be used for AoE, okay? Whoops. Next up, Hungering Threat out of Nax. You know what it is. 14 expertise. TBC got Mech Heroic, the Sun Eater. 22 stamina, 13 defense, defense rating, 19 dodge rating, and in Fire Guard Crafted, 16 hit rating. And the last one is the Latcher's Shorted Sword. This is what would be used if you don't have Hungry and Cold. You would use this because it's the same thing. You just get more attack power on it, okay? And agility and the agility stamina swap. 
And then the two rep ones are Honored Call and Warbringer, okay? They both have this 16 defense rating, 7 hit. This one has one more. You know, I never understood why the Alliance one has one more hit. That's kind of bullshit, right? But whatever. So, for for threat, Hungry and Cold is, Hungry and Cold is really good. It's a very good weapon. It can actually be used into T4 because the expertise is very nice and worth about twice as much as it hit, like I said a million times. If you're blacksmithing and you don't have Hungry and Cold, then craft Fire Guard. But a lot of, them aren't, a lot of you guys aren't going to be aren't going to be blacksmithing, right? As for the Sun Eater, it's the best for survivability for a very long time. So just keep in mind and just keep it on you just in case you need it. And Latros, like I said, it's just really good for threat if you don't have Hunger and Cold. Shieldies. At an axe, face of death. 21 stamina, 4,000 armor, 12 block rating, and 21 of your shield. TBC side for 33 badges. You have the Azure Shield of Caldera. It's 4,600 armor, 115 block, 31 stamina, 22 defense rating, and 33 block value shield. Shatar Exalted, two sockets, 19 stamina, defense by 13, and shield block for 24. And at a Botanica, normal, you have 27 stam, the Aegis of Sunbird. Nice. 19 defense rating and 29 to your shield. Pretty much you're just going to use the face of death until you get Aegis, all right? Then use this until you get the rep for Crest. And then use Crest until you have the badges for Ezra's shield. However, there are two shields in T4 that you can possibly get. Both of them being better than Azure Shield. So it's suggested that you save your badges for something more important like the neck piece. You know what I mean? And just rock the crest. Last and certainly least ranged. Out of BWR, the Dragon Breath Hand Cannon. 14 agility, 7 stamina. And out of Nax, you have Soul String, 6, six stamina, 14 crit rating, 16 attack power. And then you have the Crafted BOE on the TBC side. Gyro, Balance, Corium, Destroyer with the Socket. And 27 stamina, which is nice. The Boomstick which has 21 stamina and 13 defense rating. Fifth stowing axe down here with 12 hit rating. And at lastly, Steam Vault's Recoilless Rocket Ripper. X54, 13 stamina and a 16 crit rating. Pretty simple here as well. Just use whichever classic gun you have until you do Steam Vault's as soon as you get 70 to get the Rocket Ripper. While you're doing your daily heroic every day and set the calls heroic to try to get Boomstick. And then use Boomstick until you can afford the Gyro Balance Corium Destroyer. And it's that simple, my guys. And that's it. And that is it for this video. Thank you for watching. Like I said, the Arms and Fury, War Fury Warrior video will be next. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope all this helps someone. It's got to help somebody, and I really hope it does, okay? We have a weekly TV sub podcast as usual every Monday on Cargo's Gaming channel. I'll put a link in the description. I also stream over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Gaming. so feel free to stop by if you have any questions or shoot them in the comments. And if you wouldn't mind, please smash that like button and follow to help me grow, and I'll catch you guys on the next one, man. Peace.